No matter, like, no matter how much proof slash critical thinking or like scientific method to understand something existence, I think there's especially something that you can't physically see in the same way, like how do I know a tree exists? Well, there's, I can see it. There's always an element of faith, I think, but start with, start with, for instance, the idea of look, look at something, look at something evil. How do we know that that thing is evil? Like look at it in injustice. Like if you see a child, like I would say a normal person with any kind of moral compass seeing a child hurt or a child in pain, there's something inside of you that aches. Okay, so how do you know, like what, what brings that ache? Okay, well there's this sense of rightness or some sense of there's something wrong here. Okay, so where does that come from? Okay, there's, there's some form of moral definition that says something is right or is the way it is or good and there's something that's not. Okay, so then if you look at that, they're ultimately, in my, in my opinion, because I had a lot of skeptical years for me that I was like, I grew up in this, but I need to make sure this exists for me, in a sense, or he exists for me. And some people, the problem of evil actually makes God not exist more, but to me, the problem of evil actually brings the existence of God more into the light. Because if you need evil, you need an ultimate good, or you can't even call it evil in the first place. Because for there to be good needs to be an opposite, in the same way that for there to be darkness, there needs to be light. You can't have darkness without the evidence of the light, and vice versa. So to me, the pain, the problem, the ache, the world isn't the way it should be, actually points to the fact, well, okay, if, there's, if it's not the way it should be, what's the should be? And for there to be a should be, and the way things should be, there needs to be someone who is higher or something or an ultimate being that's higher than our definition because our definition isn't even is making the problem in the first place so if we believe for a hope of a utopia okay well we can't come up with it our own because our own coming up with it makes more mess so we need an ultimate giver of that and to me that's God I think a lot of people come to different definitions I think also I'll say this quick we can move on to the next one but I think sometimes our definition of God, we draw a lot of black and whites on, yeah, I think there's, God is a lot of things and there's probably certain things God is not, but I think a lot of people probably come closer to the definition of God and we don't give them credit for it. Yeah, so there's, there's quite a few different ways about it to think about it. Um, for me, the thing that's, Logically, I think that's made sense, like, when you see creation, and you see things like, when we say you see a classic thing, is you see a watch, like, the watch didn't just come to be, like, there was someone who created the watch, who knows the watch, who took time to find the intricates of the watch, not necessarily maybe a smart watch, but just any watch. Um, in the same way I see the universe, like, there has to be, like, I don't know if it could just be, like, there has to be a beginning to an end to everything. And just like how there's creation, there has to be a creator, and there always has to be some something. There has to be an origin, and uh, and I believe like God is that origin. In the same way, um, like I think of just parts of our body that it's, it it can't just be um, it can't just be natural just development evolution. Maybe part of it, but. Uh, like I, when I broke my collarbone, just to think that my body knows to a very, very deep level how to mend itself and how to make that bone okay again. Like when I see stuff like that, it's like how, how can that not be uniquely designed? Like there has to be some sort of intelligent design to make that come to, come to be. And two, it's just there's how I know God exists, just experience in my life, right? How uh, things that have how things have lined up in my way that I said there's no way that these things could have happened unless there was a God, which would be a long time to explain all that. But those are kind of my things. But the main thing that's helped me is the whole logical perspective. Like there, there has to be a creator to the creation that's around us. Yeah, I think. I think, I think sometimes we, like, it's really interesting sometimes when we talk about existence of 
of God and the existence of things like is is the Bible is the Bible in and of itself a tool to help prove the existence of God? Because I think a lot of people, well, did Christians just write it for their own selfish reasons of trying to prove does God exist? Right? Like take book about cats to help prove that cats exist, written by cat owners. Okay, well, it's not a very does that make sense? I know it's like it's a weird metaphor. It probably doesn't even work. But I think I think for me. Understanding what, what, what was a huge piece for me growing up was I never heard of the Bible talked about as a, as a historical piece of literature as well as the Word of God. But it is still like the Bible was written by real people in a real time, in a real place. Yes, it was the Word of God and yes, it's, it's, it has power in it, but it was also written in a certain place by a certain group of people recording really the human's experience of trying to figure out who God was as well. And yes, God was speaking through it, I believe. I believe that the Bible was, is this historical document, but it's also God's letter to humanity telling the story of, I think, the interaction of God and humanity. Like, is Genesis, like, one of the biggest issues I think we have with Genesis is we look at it like it's a, it's a, it's a biology textbook. It's not, it's a piece of poetry written by a human under the influence of God and really showing this expression of the beauty of God. So I think, I think it does. I think, I think it's, it's, a, it's a piece of the puzzle, if that's, I think in and of itself, yes, it has power and I think it does. I think we've talked about specific examples and that would take some time. I think it's a piece of the puzzle that definitely points to, hey, these were real people experiencing a real God in a real time. and. You can't deny that. I'd say so. Like, it's kind of hard to use something to justify itself. I mean, but knowing the Bible, um, like from all all the stuff that we know about the Bible, just like the background of it, it's not just religious people who kind of built this thing together, right? It's people who have been alive. Like we have tons of old artifacts of things that, like, this is what people see. There's tons of accounts of like Jesus and stuff like that. And, I think it's crazy. It would be crazy um, to think, like, because we, whether people believe in God or not, um, Jesus was a real person, right? And there was stuff that people were saying thousands of years before Jesus was alive that came to be true about his life. So I mean, it's cool to think that stuff that was said thousands of years before this person was alive, that we know was actually alive, came to be true. Um, so I'd say. Uh, I, when you sent me that, uh, I just read that question. I like that. And I think, honestly, questions, not being afraid to ask them. Like, I think for me, you can't have faith without exploring. Like, or it's, I don't know if it's faith. Like, to me, the doubts are all part. Like, and doubts is, we give doubts like so much like power almost, like that it's like an evil thing to wonder and to question for the purpose of discovery. I think that's a beautiful thing and I think that's part of faith. I think sometimes we shut people down because they ask a question. Like, do you think, if, 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 if the definition of God that we're coming up with is this ultimate big, this ultimate being that knows greater than us, and yet we crucify people for having questions. Okay, that's a pretty small picture of God then, in my opinion. Like, I think God is way bigger and our questions are a lot smaller sometimes than we kind of map it out if that's a good way to explain it. I think to me one of the best and beautiful things about following Jesus and faith is I am invited to ask a ton of questions and honestly sometimes there's no answers or sometimes it takes five years to get an answer because I've got to go on the journey to find it. I think a big thing is and then a lot of skeptical conversations is there's a lot of questions but there's not a lot of hey, I want to try to actually figure out the answer. Like, skepticism is, is not a bad thing if you want to actually discover truth. Skepticism for the sake of not actually wanting to find the truth, I think it's a huge mistake. For me personally, the most important thing in my life is just being open and pursuing a relationship with, with God for me. Um, if you 
it's like anything, like if you want to be fit, if you want to be someone who has muscles or looks good, you have to work for that, right? If you're someone who wants to believe or has, like, believes and wants to see their faith grow, like, you have to be pursuing um, a relationship with God, right? Like, if you want to see Him in your life, you want to see more, you have to be willing to be reading the Bible, studying, not just reading, but studying it and what it means, um, being around community with people, um, just having an authentic authentic desire to want to go deeper in your faith. Like, you can't just sit there and act like faith is going to happen. Like, I know when I, when I was in high school, not too long ago, six years ago, seven years ago, I, there was a moment where I just kind of sat there, and I was like, oh, I believe in God, but then things, some things came in my life, it's like my faith was totally rocked, because I didn't have a connection that I truly needed to have. Like, I didn't truly commit time to wanting to be, um, Close to God. And it's not to say that you need to do all these things to have to be have faith. Like it's easy to have faith. You just gotta choose to believe and pursue God, right? Many, but you know what you know what's awesome? Like I think like I've seen like I I've had, you know, actually just recently, like I and again, you know what? You may hear this and be like, whatever, that's crazy. That's okay. You can be skeptical of it too, and that's fine. Um, but so my wife and I were kind of in a little bit of a financial bind, kind of unexpectedly. And we were like, man, we need like a thousand dollars, really, to get ourselves out. And I was praying for that. Saturday, Sunday morning, my dad sends me a text saying, "Hey, there was an envelope on my desk with my name on it. I opened it, and there was a letter saying." Hey, I felt I felt led to give this to John and Jesse. I don't know who it is, and it was for a check of a thousand dollars. You could say that's just coincidence, sure. I think I think you have a very small picture of life. I would say if that there's something bigger going on when those things happen. I've seen people healed. I've seen other, but you know what? And that's all awesome. I think I've also seen. I've seen small things happen in prayer too that are just as powerful miracles. Like having an absolute terrible day and having a conversation honestly with God about it and then walking away from that conversation with God and that prayer, because that's really what prayer is, is conversation and intercession with God. And watching my day take a major turn, to me that's a miracle just as much. But I have lots of stories, um, but we don't have time in this. But yeah, I definitely, if the answer is, have you seen prayer work? Heck yeah, I have. Yeah, this is actually a very easy one for me. When I was uh, when I was in high school, I there was something going on. I started developing this bump on my on my head. Like there was clearly, like you could see a physical bump on my head, and um, I was starting to slur my speech. I was starting to uh, get horrible headaches. I would confuse people. Like um, I would call my mom by some other name, which afterwards I'd be like, that's not who that is, like what's going on? And I, I would go get a CAT scans, MRIs, all this stuff. And even though there was physically like a bump, like there was something there, they're like, we don't see anything. So there was something going on neuro neurologically. Um, and even to this day, I have no clue what it was, but it was clear that there was something going on that was, it was some medical thing. And uh, I used to play in the band at church the main, on the main stage, and just one time I decided, I decided to say, we are getting prayer requests, I was like, hey, this is what's been going on in my life, I'm experiencing headaches, uh, I can't speak correctly sometimes, I'm confusing things, mixing things up, um, can you just pray for me about that, and uh, it was just something I just put out on a limb, like, can you pray for me, I, didn't, I honestly wasn't expecting anything, because I had never seen anything crazy happen, um, but I remember specifically one one of the guys put his hand on my forehead and prayed specifically for healing, that it would go away. And uh, honestly, within weeks, the bump had gone away. I didn't have headaches as bad anymore. My speech wasn't slurred. I wasn't confusing people anymore. And I truly believe, um, doctors had no clue what it was, but whatever it was, um, there's a God who loved me, who knew what was going on inside of me, and honestly, probably just wanted me to go to him with the issue. And uh, it was healed just like that. Like I don't. That's not something that I can explain through medical reasons, but that's obviously a clear miracle that I saw through prayer that's happened. 
I, I think I'd go back to the same answer I gave with like what's the most important thing about an individual's faith. I think, if we're close to that question, it would be, man, find a group of people that are interested in having a conversation about the struggle of faith that you're having and not people, this is the important part, not people who would affirm your struggle, if that makes sense. Go to the, if I'm having an issue with something that I'm, I'm wrestling through, I go to somebody who's not good, struggling with the same thing, if that makes sense. Wisdom says, go to somebody who has walked in what you have already walked. In my opinion, wisdom says, go to that person and walk through the struggle with them that can actually give you real advice that don't, that won't agree with you all the time. Because I think that's easy in skeptical circles. And then the same with non-skeptical circles as well. Like if I, if I spent my whole life talking to people who thought the same way I did, I think that's kind of missing the point. Like I think you look at the life of Jesus, like whether you're a skeptic or not, whether you follow Jesus, whether you're a Christian, whether you're not, whether you're an atheist or not, look at his life. I mean, he spent more time with people that didn't think the same way as he did and invited them into it more than staying with the people that... It would be easy to stay with the people that think the same way as you do. That's not hard. What's hard is entering into a way of living that actually challenges that. If that makes sense, I, don't, I, I would say don't be afraid. To, don't ever stop asking questions. But don't be afraid to actually acknowledge the answer when you find it. Yeah, um, first of all, like, you have to have an open mind, right? You can't, with anything, if you're struggling with believing anything or struggling in any regard of your life, you have to have an open mind towards things. You can't just, if you're going to with your own biases, like, this is what, this is just truth, um, you're not going to get anywhere, right? If you're going to something, like, say you're going to a doctor, and you're like, this is what's wrong with me, and you go to the doctor, and the doctor's saying, no, actually, you just, like, Maybe you're saying your leg is broken when really it's your arm. It's totally stupid. But you're just like, no, I feel pain in my, in my leg because my leg is broken. And uh, he's like, no, I can literally see your arm's dislocated. I don't know why you think you have pain. Like, this is what's wrong with you. Um, if you don't trust, if you, don't, if you go in with your own biases and don't have your mind open to what other people are going to say, then uh, you, it, it just won't, it won't help out. But um, for those who don't believe, uh, just allow yourself to be allow allow yourself to be open to those things, and um, allow people to speak into your life that actually have experienced those things. Um, it can help guide you. For those who may be struggling with faith or don't even know, well, is there a God? Is there not? Um, but or maybe they believe there's a God, but they don't know if it's the God that we necessarily believe in. Um, what I <clears throat> what I usually say is like like read read the Bible. Talk to pastors or people who have an experience with with faith, um, and just allow your, allow them to speak into your life. Because I think with anything, like if I were to go to anyone and say, "Hey, tell me," it's about it's all about being mature too. Like go to someone's like, "Hey, tell me about this issue," like whatever hot topic is coming up, whether it's <laughs> like abortion, which is hot right now, or if it's some political thing, or even like for me becoming an adult, like any. Thing with taxes or it, it could be anything at all it doesn't necessarily have to be faith obviously I think faith is bigger than all of those things um, if I went and said like okay I believe this I'm just gonna go talk to them and have them tell me and then tell them they're wrong um, it doesn't help it doesn't go anywhere you actually have to be willing to humble yourself to say okay I'm gonna allow this person to help me see what they see and help me move along with what I'm going through right so hope that answers that <laughs> So just to close out, man, I sound like my pastor. Uh, I'm gonna give you a bit of recap. So, how do I know that God exists? It's too many reasons to count. There's what John and Ron were saying, like counting them with good and bad, like all this could have come from nothing. But for me, it's because I've seen it. There's just so much stuff that I've been through and seen people go through that just says, you know, there has to be God. So, is biblical prophecy an effective tool to determine it? Hundred percent. There are over 600 prophecies that have been that have been fulfilled, like the entire line of empires from Babylon to the Byzantines, cars, not just Israel becoming a country, but the exact circumstances of it becoming a country, you know, etc., etc. I could go on for days, but there's no way that God 
could so much being prophesied and coming true. Most important thing I say, being a Christian isn't a religion, it's a relationship with a God that's there, that hears you, that knows exactly what you need, and if you let that relationship slip away, you end up right where you started, so maintaining that relationship is definitely a priority. So that goes with just praying, reading the Bible, making sure you know, you know, you keep them caught up on it. So, as for miracles through prayer, my Lord, I've, I've seen too many count. I've seen people heal them with minor things. I've seen people build those major things. I've seen the hardest of atheists become believers. I've seen possible victories. And like, I could go on for hours about each. So, next steps, advice, go deeper. Explore. Go back to the roots of what you believe in and lack thereof. Because Jesus said to seek and you will find. And like John said, if you seek to prove rather than disprove, you will find. So I'm just going to leave you with a quote from Bonham. He said, if I don't believe in a God that doesn't exist, then no harm done. But if I don't believe in a God that does exist, then it's the worst mistake that I could have. And you hurt